Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. Um, thanks for coming out. I'm glad to be the first talk. So um, I'm going to be talking today about the future of hiring. Um, just to quickly introduce myself, I'm Liz. I'm the co-founder and CEO of a company called Way Up. So Way Up is the largest marketplace exclusively for college students to get part-time jobs, summer internships, and full-time jobs. So anything from a Starbucks barista position to a Goldman Sachs investment banking position. Um, we are based here in New York City, start up about 45 people full-time here. So that's a little bit about Way Up and why I'm here to talk to you today. But let's get started. So. Um, just to go on to the history of hiring, because I think before we, you can go to the next slide. Um, before we talk about the future of hiring, I think it's important to understand the past just to see how far we've come. So back in the 1300s, um, the Black Death was happening, and so there was a huge shortage of labor. So there was this thing created called mop fairs. Now, mop fairs were basically this concept where the government would come and talk about um, you know, the conditions for employment over the next year. So who would come to listen to them? Well, of course, the employers and the job seekers. So they all gathered in these big squares, and the guys started talking to each other. Usually it was guys, not women. Guys started talking to each other, negotiating salaries, and there you go. It was the first kind of career fair of its age. 1917, a bunch of laws changed, so those stopped. Then, you can go on to the next slide, uh, the 1900s happened. So in the 1900s, who here, I think probably everyone here was alive in the 1900s, I think almost everyone here, uh, what were some of the ways that people were getting hired? Just shout out loud. Monster, newspaper, anything else? Girls? <laughs> Referrals, yes. <laughs> I was like, girls. Yeah, so you had newspaper classified ads was by far the biggest. Of course, you also had physical signs in the front of doors and then family connections, which also means really referrals. Of course, this was inefficient and unfair. And so this man came about in around 1991. I'm just waiting for the next slide. Sorry, guys. Um, and does anyone know who that is? No? I guarantee every single one of you use his product every day. All right, so this is Sir Tim Berners-Lee, who created the World Wide Web. And when he created the World Wide Web in 1991, you should definitely know that name, it's a good name. Uh, he created the World Wide Web in 1991, and so a couple of years later, NetStart was created in 1994. So NetStart was basically this company um, where uh, this guy said, okay, I'm gonna sell software to these companies and I'm gonna tell you that you can post jobs on your website, on your brand new company website, and you can also kind of collect all the inbound um, applications. And then he realized, well, maybe I should take advantage of the World Wide Web and the fact that consumers, like all of us, are starting to go on there, and so I'll create, actually, a job board. And that later became Career Builder. So that was the first one. There also were many more. There was, uh, oh no, sorry, there were also six big uh, newspapers that came about, New York Times, Los Angeles Times, and so on, and they all kind of combined together to create Career Path in 1995, and that was basically because of the fact that newspapers made so much of their money from classifieds, and they were missing out on this huge revenue stream by uh, not taking advantage of the web. Of course, there were others. Hot Jobs was huge. Monster.com, huge. Monster.com now is like not huge at all. Indeed.com is the biggest one. But at the end of the day, this is 1994 to 2016, and you've seen this kind of like big history of the World Wide Web and how things have been changing. I love calling it the World Wide Web, and how things have been changing over the past several years. And you see flying cars, self-driving cars. You see, uh, you know, uh, medicine that's going to solve cancer, and yet for some reason. It still sucks to hire as an employer of 45 people. I've probably interviewed over 600, I think, in the past two years. Um, and as job seekers in the audience, and once upon a time I was a job seeker too, it still sucks to apply for jobs. And so I'm here to talk about really what is kind of the, the future of applying for jobs. So first I'll take a stab at um, why it sucks to apply for jobs. So first of all, time. I'm going to talk about it from both the job seeker and the employer. So from the job seeker, you're wasting time going on places like maybe an indeed.com where you're looking through 
all of these like hundreds of thousands and often millions of jobs. Um, you want to find diversity. That's that middle part. Uh, so you want to see all types of jobs because you don't want to just pigeonhole yourself unless maybe you went to grad school and you know you need to become a dentist or a lawyer. But you also want to find the right fit. And you have no idea what kind of job you want to do, especially because every single job has a million job qualifications and no one wants to read all of this. And on the employer side, by the way, the same three things are happening. They don't really have the time to go through. I mean, my last employer, Google, gets hundreds of thousands and millions of jobs depending on the uh, applications, depending on the office. At the end of the day, they do not have time to go through every single one. They want to get diverse workforce, but if they're depending on referrals from their already pretty intelligent employees, then they're not going to get that much diversity. And then, of course, they're always looking for the right match. So uh, just a quick, I'm just waiting for the next slide. So just a quick uh, side note, this is why we created Way Up. So I'll tell you a little bit about why we created Way Up and the way we did. And then I'm going to talk about the future of hiring and how, as you'll see, we believe that we're kind of itching towards that. So on Way Up, the way it works is that a student comes onto the site, they register with a .edu email, they fill out a full profile, so we get a ton of information about them, and if you know a lot about data, it's basically structured data. And then, once they have all that information, they only see jobs that they're qualified to apply for. So I apologize that the screen's a little bit blurry, but this girl, if she says that she is, uh, speaks Spanish, she'll see a job that requires you to speak Spanish. But if she said she spoke French, she wouldn't see that job. And then when she sees a job she likes, she clicks apply and her application goes directly through the business. The magic there, by the way, is that fortunately, she doesn't have to fill out her profile 10 times to apply for 10 jobs. So I'm kind of touching on some of the things that I believe are gonna be part of the future of hiring. And as a result, by the way, one in every three of our users get hired through Way Up, and it's pretty much because we're vetting them before, we're vetting all the jobs for them, and we're vetting the candidates for the jobs. So now on to kind of what I believe will be the future of hiring. Um, so number one, easier applications, and I'll get a little more into this. Number two, more focus on diversity, and this is two-dimensional diversity, probably not the kind of diversity you all might be thinking about. Number three is quicker interviews, and you might be surprised by how a lot of companies, including huge ones like Goldman Sachs, are doing that. And number four, <laughs> and number four, even more on-demand. And uh, does everyone here, raise your hand if you do know what the on-demand economy is. Awesome, all right, great. You actually all know about it, you just might know it by name, so we're gonna get into it. All right, so let's start with easier applications. So, keep going. <laughs> so, who here has seen a screen like this? Yeah, so that's terrible that you've, so many of you have seen a screen like this. This is what most job applications in the world look like. And if you wanna apply for 10 jobs, and sorry, <laughs> if you want to apply for 10 jobs, then you have to fill that out 10 times. So that's pretty crazy because at the end of the day, that thing takes you 20 minutes or more. The next one is more focus on diversity. So a lot of employers really care about two types of diversity. And that's not just about gender and ethnicity. So the first one is inherited. So on the inherited side, there's, of course, socioeconomic background. These are the things you're born with. So you don't really have a choice in this kind of diversity. It's your ethnicity. It's your gender. Um, it's your sexual orientation. But then there's, of course, the acquired diversity. And employers are starting to care a lot more about that. You just keep going. Uh, so that's everything from collegiate philosophy, where you went to school, to where you're from in the world, uh, or where you've lived in the world, to what languages you speak. Are you an introvert? Are you an extrovert? So companies are starting to care a lot more about that. And as you'll see, actually, if you start looking at a lot of the more forward-thinking companies out there, what they're starting to do is actually really find a way to test candidates for that in the job application itself, which is pretty amazing. The third point is quicker interviews. So on quicker interviews, this is actually something new, and if you haven't applied for a job in the recent past, you've probably never seen this before. But what people are now able to do is companies are actually posting first round job questions. They're no longer doing first round interviews. They're not gonna phone screen you or fly you out to their office. They're actually sending you, if your resume passed the first test, they're sending you a bunch of questions that they want you to answer. And they're basically saying, we want you to answer these questions. Higher View is one of the companies take the interview a bunch more. And they're sending you these questions and saying, we want you to answer this. And then people actually have to record it on the spot. You can't re-record or anything like that. Question shows up on your screen, you report it, you record it, and then you send it over. So that is the new version of the first round interview. And we're starting to see all types of companies actually transitioning to that, which is pretty fascinating because if you think about it, the job candidate gets to stay in bed. I mean, 
you know, professional on the top, party on the bottom, whatever, but you get to stay in bed and just take this interview and it's very comfortable. You don't have to have sweaty hands and shake their hand. And on the, on the job uh, employer side, they don't have to spend so much money having their, you know, employees take time off out of their day to, instead of generating revenue. And they're now interviewing all these candidates that may or may not get hired. And on top of that, they're probably also paying to fly in job seeking candidates. So, Number four, this last one that most of you said you don't really know about is on-demand opportunities. So in terms of on-demand opportunities, that's basically when you can hire someone instantaneously. So on the f job seeker side, this is basically us being flexible and saying, you know what? I want to get any kind of job, and I want to get it when I want it. So I don't want to have to deal with the fact that Goldman Sachs hires in September for a job that's going to start in May. I want to get a job right now because I'm broke and I want to go out tonight. So I'm going to go and open this app, and I'm going to get a job right now on the spot. And this is becoming huge, and I believe it's like only at the start. So let's get into some of the on-demand economy types of jobs. So how would you hire a driver if you wanted a driver on the spot, and if you were a driver and you wanted to get a job on the spot? Uber. Uber. All right, how about this next one? Uh, you want a dog walker on the spot. Anyone? Rover. Uh, and there's like a million others. Um, next one, what about a, I think this one, oh, someone to deliver something for you. Ship, which, what else? Like I, I want food from that restaurant um, and they don't have a delivery guy. Postmates, we heard, there you go. And there's also Uber, by the way, now. Um, Uber's like going to take over this whole screen, I think, one day. Um, you've got, and, and a lot of companies, by the way, call themselves the Uber for X, the Uber for blank. Um, how about babysitting? So you can now trust a stranger with the tap of one button. Sitter City. And there's Care.com and a bunch of others. Um, I think I've got one more maybe up there or not. One more. All right. I want to get in a plane, and I'm already nervous enough but I want to basically get in a plane with a stranger who can fly me up and hope that he's licensed. We heard Jet, there's Black Jet is one, um, a pretty big one. Um, great, and so much more. So honestly, I was looking online when I was making this deck and I was saying, okay, I wanna hire a clown. There's a way to hire a clown instantaneously. I wanna hire someone ready for this to massage my feet. You can do it, not just any feed. And I think an interesting story, I, was, uh, I do a lot of like, broadcast talks about kind of the future of work especially, um, and I was doing one that I got asked to do on Wednesday night for a Thursday morning 8 a.m. shoot. And so Wednesday night at 6 p.m., and I asked my assistant, please find a, a hair salon that can do my hair at 7 a.m. tomorrow. And she's looking everywhere, and an hour later, she says, I cannot find anyone that has an opening. So I was like, shit, 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 what do I do? And she said, why don't you just do Glam Squad? And of course, I should have thought of Glam Squad. I literally open this app, and I say, I need my hair done tomorrow at 7 a.m. And by the way, I don't want to get out of bed. So I, I did actually get out of bed. I went to my, uh, walked to my dining room table. But a woman came at 7 a.m. the next morning, did my hair. It looked great at 7 a.m. the next day. And, uh, and that was it. And I asked her on the spot, I said, I'm just curious. Is this what you do for a living? Is this just something because you know you had a couple free hours? And she said, this is what I do for a career. This is not just a job, this is my career. And at the end of the day, when I want to work today, I'm going to work. But when I need to take my daughter to her you know, nursery school, after school activity uh, later today, I'm not going to work and it's on my own choice. And at the end of the day, no one else can tell me what to do or what not to do. So I thought that was pretty awesome. And then of course I got an Uber car to go to the interview. And in the Uber car, I also asked him, just curious, uh, is this what you do for a living or is this just something you're doing to make cash on the side? Are you a student? So of course this is what I do for a living. Like I love doing this. I meet the most amazing people and I have my own hours. I think he was a little bit annoyed with Uber for taking so much commission, but that's another story. So at the end of the day, the on-demand economy is very much real and is very much happening and I believe we're only at the start. But overall, I hope if there's one thing that you take from this, and hopefully it's one thing that I've shown, is that the future of hiring is exciting, but not just for employers and not just for job seekers. It's really a mutual benefit for both sides. So I'm personally really excited about the future of hiring, and I hope you guys are all as well. So thank you so much for having me. Do we do, we do questions or no? I don't. Does anyone have any questions about anything, work, hiring? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Yeah, so he asked, how do I feel about IQ and personality tests for a first round? So there are actually, this is kind of be surprising, you all, if you have applied for a job in the past four years at one of the major Fortune 500s, there's a very high likelihood that you already took a personality test, not IQ test, but personality test without even knowing. So as I think I briefly mentioned, but just to get more into it, um, on applications now, a lot of companies will actually say if they answered these four questions correctly, and it's questions such as, yes, I'm willing to travel, or yes, I, am a, I'm, I'm a, uh, I have the ability to work in the US legally. Um, if you answer those questions correctly, serve them the personality test, and then that's the second vetting. So we're literally getting through almost three rounds of vetting, and if you put it through the way up layer of only the right candidates are seeing it from the start, that's four rounds of vetting off the bat. So if you're now spending your time, and by the way, your time is valuable, you'd be doing a lot of other things. So if you're spending your time going into the physical interview, you know that there's a good chance that you've probably already been through like three or four rounds of interviews already without even spending the time or money. Yeah. It's a great question, an awesome question, actually. So her question is, in these video interviews, do you have to do it when your video is shown? So um, I have spoken to a lot of these companies, like take the interview, hire view, et cetera, about that. And in short, um, a lot of them do actually give the candidates the ability to hide their video and just make it about the voice. I think the job, the, the company really wants to hear how are you responding in real time, they care more about voice than video. Um, so yes, the job candidate can actually opt out, but what I've heard, and this is like a not identical statistic, but it was less than 5% of candidates actually did want to hide their video. So I think at the end of the day, they probably say, well, if this person probably wants to see what I look like, because if, if I wasn't doing this over video, I'd be going in and they'd be seeing what I looked like, unless I came in with like a bag over my head, so. Any other, maybe time for one more question? One more question. Who has a good one? Go for it. Ooh, that is an awesome question. So with new setups and interactions, with this whole new thing, are you seeing new faux pas? Yes, 100%. So I'll give you an example. On Way Up, we try to make it much easier to apply for a job. So there's something called like a one-click application, but there's also questions. You know the cover letter? So Fun fact is that no employer reads cover letters anymore. Like literally what I do for a living is talk to HR people and not one of them read your cover letter. Um, sometimes they'll have a machine look through it to make sure there are no spelling or grammar mistakes, but that's about it. So at the end of the day, what we've seen actually is with the short, we have short uh, application questions that are like the replacement of the cover letter. And we often see, and we have like over half a million active students using this platform pretty much every month. And so at the end of the day, what you'll often see actually is that people will write three words to answer the question. So why do you want to work here? Because it looks fun. It's like, no. So people are actually starting to take this a little, because it's so much easier to apply for a job, they're starting to take it a little less um, seriously, if you will. And in Europe, they're having not the same problem because people take it much more seriously. I'll say on the video interviewing side, actually, I've heard multiple employers say, this candidate showed up for the interview. I mentioned professional on the top, party on the bottom party on the top, <laughs> and I don't know what was on the bottom, but I don't want to know. But uh, you know, one guy showed up, um, this is not on our platform, another platform, one student showed up for a banking interview, topless, uh, and he was a surfer and he was going to surf and he, wanted, he thought, this is my personality, my hobby is surfing, I want to talk about it and show it by being in my surfer gear. Probably not the best way to get a banking internship. So I think I was told I have to stop. I would love to take more questions. But thank you guys so much. And please feel free to uh, go to wayup.com if you want to learn more. Take care. <laughs>